So this is part two of my exploration of rolling codes to understand how they work. And I was actually able to hack my own carport, as we can see of the video above. Uh, and I was able to enter my garage using my Flipper Zero, even if this system uses rolling codes. So if you are new to rolling codes, I recommend my first video of the rolling codes explained. I'll put a link and below in the description to that. Uh, and here I learned that uh, you cannot do a basic replay attack on the systems using uh, rolling codes because the code that you have recorded is only valid once. So how was I able to hack my own garage port using my flipper to use it as a key? Yeah, I will try to explain. So let's start to go into the menu of the flipper and select sub gigahertz, which is here. And then as we know, we cannot record and use any saved ones because now we're working with rolling codes. So we have to go into add manually. And this is quite interesting because I'm using the Rogmaster firmware for the moment. And as we can see here, there are several algorithms for uh, systems already saved here. Uh, and this comes with the, the firmware uh, automatically. So I will go down to the system that my carport is using, and that is the protocol called security 1.0 the security plus and i'm using 433 megahertz which is quite normal here in europe so by selecting this then we have to give this a name so let's for test just call it a one and we can save it and then let's go back to the list which is here a one and now i can emulate this and what we will see here, pay close attention to um, the second last row, which says counter. So here we can press the send button and it will increase by a number. This is my first pressing. Then I can press again. This is my second and so on. So this means that for every time I am pressing this key, it will send a new signal. And what signal will be sent? Well, that is up to uh, the counter and the key and the algorithm. And since this is a known algorithm, both to my flipper and to my carport, the receiver, it should be possible to pair these two. So let's go out to my carport and test how this works. So this is my garage door in my garage. Uh, this is a lift master as we can see and let's let's say that okay i have this new uh a newly bought uh, remote control and i do i want to pair it towards my receiver so at the back side it's got an orange button i'll press that once and it's a led lightning up and then i can select a button on my remote so i'll press it once and the receiver will click a couple of times and the light is bl blinking so that means that I have now paired my control with my new remote I'll press the the right bottom button and it works I'll stop it and I'll take it again okay N now let's do the same with my flipper so let's go into the menu let's go into sub gigahertz let's say add manually and i know that my my receiver is using the protocol called security one so i'll select this frequency and then we will give it a name carport new save and the interesting part now is if i scroll down to my carport new which is here i can now emulate it but first i need to put my receiver as we saw in, in the correct mode so once again i'll be pressing the orange button at the back side it's lighting up let's try to emulate yes now i sent this signal 
we can see on the screen the key that I sent in and the receiver was making a response saying that this was okay so let's try to send this signal now yes now the door is closing I'll send it again it opens that's very cool actually so that means that I can use my flipper as a remote for my rolling code LiftMaster receiver okay so let's try to figure out what's really going on here let's do the same thing again let's go into the sub gigahertz and then add manually and then select the protocol that we are using security plus 1.0 and the correct frequency and now let's give it a name let's just give it a Test name M1 for simplicity. Save and let's emulate for the first time M1, which is here. Pay close attention to the details. And now I will send this for the first time. And the only thing changing is the counter. We can see the key, we can see the ID, we can see the button, which is the middle, and the counter will increase for each time I am sending this. So when in learning mode, the receiver will start a new register for accepting this key and this serial number, and also knowing the current counter of the sender. But when in operating mode, it will only accept known keys and unique serial numbers, in addition to a counter that is synchronized with the sender. Uh, it will accept some future codes uh, which ensures that uh, your sender is not getting out of sync if you press it a couple of times. But keep in mind that it will get out of sync if you press it too many times when you are outside the receiving area of the receiver. So unknown senders are not accepted because the IDs such as the key and serial number are, are uh, unknown. Uh, and also replaying a known sender will not help because as we know, the counter is uh, not in sync and it will only accept unused codes. So can you manually increase the counter? Uh, to my knowledge, yes, but that depends on the protocol. So I would say that my system, the security plus 1.0 is not considered as very secure because if you know the IDs and you know the counter and the protocol, you can calculate the next valid code uh, and that is also why there are better and newer codes available uh, at the market. And the uh, successor of uh, security plus 1.0 is security plus 2.0. And there also exists other more secure protocols.